Welcome back. Uh, today's tutorial is going to focus on gross muscle anatomy. We're going to outline and point out some major muscles of the face, the head, and the neck. We're going to start right at the head and we're going to turn this model around. Bear with me as a lot of these muscles are going to be shown in different views. So we're going to move this around a lot. We're going to start right here. This entire muscle is called the occipital frontalis. It's comprised of two bellies, a frontal belly and an occipital belly. We can take it even further and name these muscles. So the frontalis muscle with the occipitalis. And again, if you hear the similarities between our cranial bones, uh, we see that the frontalis is gonna lie right on top of that frontal bone. The occipitalis lies right on top of the occipital bone which stands to reason when we look on the other side of our model, we will find over the temporal bone, another similarly named muscle. Let's stay back here. Our frontalis is gonna be connected by a tendinous sheet called an aponeurosis. This aponeurosis has a name, it's called the epicranius. It connects that frontal and that occipital belly. So if we look at the entire muscle, we have the occipital frontalis separated and connected by the epicranius. Our bellies will be our frontalis and our occipitalis. We're gonna turn this model around. We're gonna go right into the side of his head and we see that nice broad muscle known as the temporalis, okay? Now, we're gonna go right back into the front of his face and we're gonna go working through the muscles of the face. We're gonna start here outline this muscle. This is a interesting muscle. It's called the corrugator supercilii. This muscle is uh, fun. I tell my students to think about making super silly faces. If you make a angry face, that muscle that is contracting to bulge the corners of your eyebrows, the medial most corners of your eyebrows is due to the contraction of this muscle, corrugator supercilii. So make a nice, fun, super silly face, get angry, look in the mirror, and you'll find this muscle. That's the nice thing about face, facial muscles is that they are palpable. We can touch them, we can make some faces, have fun with this, make some faces and see how they work. Now remember naming muscles based on fascicle arrangement. We see some circular muscles. So we will name them orbicularis. We have two orbicularis muscles, the orbicularis oculi and the orbicularis oris. So again, here's our surface terms from the first week of anatomy and physiology one, where we have oris being mouth, oculi being eye. Remember naming muscles based on action, based on location is going to be key. The words in these muscles tell us a couple things, tell us one location, help us identify action as well as origin and insertion. So it gives us a clue as to where to look for some of these muscles. So we'll start right around here again at the lips and we'll see some fun muscles, muscles that help us smile that are going to elevate or lift the angles of the mouth. Right here, we have the levator anguli oris. And if there's a levator, something elevator, elevating, there has to be something depressing. So smiling will be due to this levator anguli oris. On the other side, we're going to have our depressor anguli oris. So this will bring the angles of the mouth down as in frowning. Now, aside from the angles of the mouth, we're gonna deal with the lips in, in of itself. So we use the word labii. So we have the levator labii superioris, and we're going to have our depressor labii inferioris. Okay. So these are muscles that are going to allow us to frown and are going to allow us to open and close our mouth as well as smiling. We're going to turn our model to the side for a second. Uh, we're going to help us identify a couple more muscles right here uh, on the side of the face. One of the strongest muscles of our body, the strongest muscle in our body is known as the masseter. Uh, this muscle in, its, in of itself can produce close to 300 pounds per square inch of force uh, for chewing. So this is pretty impressive. Again, it's the strongest muscle in our body. <clears throat> Deep to that, if you look underneath, is our buccinator. If you go back to AP1, our surface terms, you think of the cheek, the aspect of the cheek as being buccal. This muscle, again, deep, is the buccinator. 
the muscle that we see coming from the angle of the mouth, the corner of the mouth, and extending down and behind the masseter is known as the rosorius. Above it, we have two more muscles that attach to the zygomatic bone. That's our clue for naming. Zygomatic, a zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor. We can look at this big strapping muscle that starts behind the ear and is going to insert down to the clavicle and to the sternum. This muscle, if you look at its origin, is the mastoid process. And again, naming muscles based on their origin and their insertion for this muscle is going to be key. This is a large muscle of the neck. It's called the sternocleidomastoid. So sternocleidomastoid, again, clido meaning bridge. This muscle bridges the sternum to the mastoid process. We can go to the muscles in the neck. Now, before we get to identifying any more muscles in the neck, I'm gonna point out uh, one major point. A muscle that a lot of students have difficulty finding and locating is the platysma. Uh, the platysma is a relatively flat muscle that starts right here in the mandible and drops down over all these neck muscles, these deep neck muscles. The reason why you're not gonna find this and the reason why students have difficulty finding this is that this muscle is the superficial most muscle in the neck. In order to see any muscle deep to it, it has to be reflected, it has to be removed. So this is the reason why you will not find this on many models. Refer back to your lab book, refer, refer back to your textbook or any other online resource to see a picture of the neck muscle, that platysma. Again, this muscle helps flatten the neck. The last few muscles that we're gonna look at in the neck are these two muscles here that lie over the larynx from the hyoid bone. We have two, and again, origin and insertion is gonna be key to help name these. We have the sternohyoid, is the medial most muscle, and behind it would be the amohyoid. In the chin, remember the aspect of the chin, that surface term is mental, we find the mentalis. So this is our mentalis muscle. As we continue with the head, I just wanna shift gears and shift models uh, for the reason that with this model, even though it looks a little different than the model we were just using, we can look to the underside of the jaw to see a few more muscles that are gonna be of importance that we need to identify. Number one is going to be the digastric. Remember, di implies two. We have two bellies here. We have an anterior belly followed by the posterior belly. We're also going to have the stylohyoid. This muscle is going to run from the hyoid bone all the way to the styloid process uh, at the inferior aspect on the underside of that skull. So again, another view at some of the muscles that we just identified at the other model, and we can outline them real quick. We see our zygomaticus major, zygomaticus minor, orbicularis oculi, frontalis, temporalis. We have our masseter muscle, our rosorius deep to it. We have our depressor anguli oris. We have our um, rosorius orbicularis oris, our mentalis, our digastric. We see our anterior belly. Again, notice the platysma is not visible here because it has been cut. Again, cut is our sternocleidomastoid. And that pretty much sums up the muscles that we have to do in the face, head, and neck. Thank you for watching.